and welcome to the first in five of our goal technical training series on trail stop approaches this first session in this series of five is a revision of trailing stop principles subsequently in the next four videos we will be going through individual approaches so you can have a look at these and review them against what you're doing now and potentially make changes accordingly or test them out for sure Mike Smith, Senior Analyst and Head of Client Education Trainer here to take you through this next five videos. So let's start at the beginning and ask the question, what are we trying to achieve with a trail stop? Well, quite simply, we are attempting to retain as much profit as possible in a position that's gone at least for some time in our desired direction. And an alternative way of expressing this is to say that we're trying to manage profit risk. Additionally, we can actually begin to trail as soon as a position is opened. Although many people choose not to trail until something is in profit, we can start to reduce initial risk. You've got to decide whether that is something worth having a look at for you or otherwise. Also, a trail stop can be used in accumulation approaches, which is another story for another video series. So our first challenge really is to choose our potential uh, overall approach. And there are four choices in this. First of all is we can choose not to have one at all and just rely on our initial stop and profit target or informally just when you feel like it. Really this is something that we feel you could do better in. So make sure that you test some of these out if you're not using a trail stop already. The second approach is to use a price orientated indicator as what we would term in indirect trail. So we could use a MACD signal line crossing back over the histogram with or without a safety net stop in place. And our final video is going to look at this approach in some more detail. We could use what's termed a passive trail. So we trail to break even or above at a specified price point. And then subsequently it is that break even and profit target which will remain our two potential exit points. And finally, what I would term an active trail, where we have a system or manual regular movement, often at the end of each candle or specified price action, that will mean we will move our stop accordingly. Whichever you're doing now, of course, ask the question, how is that serving you? Look at your results, look at what you've had to give back to the market, which of, of course is our aim of using trail stops and decide, well, could I do better? The number two challenge, of course, is which strategy, if you are going to use a proactive stop, then the common strategies are using a price EMA cross, a retracement approach, key levels, which may be key levels on time frames, such as the next resistance above and then the next resistance above that, or an ATR or risk multiple. And these obviously, in the case of the latter, may be automated on the platform to some degree. And we're going to go through those three also each meriting a specific video again so you can get the detail you need to make the choice you need to for your trading and of course as we plan these just a reminder that all plan statements must be specific and unambiguous to enable you to be consistent in your action and measure what you're doing and so subsequently after you planted your flag and tried something out for a while you can test it against the other approaches fairly easily in terms of the consideration about which one is right for you, and we'll cover these as we go through individual videos, there are four which we would suggest are worth thinking about. First of all, the ease of use, which may be attributed to your trader level. It, for an example, some may find a beginner level that are using a price EMA cross is relatively easy to understand. It may be that time is an issue for you, particularly if you're using something more complex, when we either need to monitor it regularly or we need to do some calculations to work it all out. The third is evidence in terms of what's worked for you and what hasn't worked for you before. And then the fourth is unambiguity, meaning it's absolutely clear what you've got to do when. So there we go. It sort of sets the scene for our next videos. I hope that's interesting, useful and sparks some attention in making sure that you subscribe and like the other videos in this series so you can make that decision subsequent to watching them as to which would work for you. See you in the next video. Trade safe and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye for now.